subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'm with Patricia Mukhin, editor of the Shillong Times, uh, based in uh, Shillong in Meghalaya, and Kanchan Gupta, former journalist with the Telegraph, the Statesman, and the Pioneer, and currently with the ORF think tank based in Delhi. Welcome to both of you. You're, uh, this is the print debates, and we are discussing freedom of speech and expression in India these days, and how increasingly it seems as if a lot of people have a thin skin. Patricia, you have been hauled up by the Meghalai High Court for a Facebook post that you wrote a few months ago, and now you're in the Supreme Court. So first of all, if I could come to you and ask you what this story is about and what happened. Um, thank you for this, uh, Jyoti. At least I can clear the air on why uh, there is this police FIR against me, or rather an FIR filed by a traditional institution of a particular locality. So in July this year, some nine boys had gone to play basketball in a tribal-dominated area of Shillong. And they were beaten up with rods. That whole basketball court was, you know, was, was closed up. The gates were closed. The entry gates were closed. They were beaten up. Some of them had very severe head injuries. The others managed to escape somehow. And uh, I, I felt that... Yeah, these are non-tribal boys. Yeah, these are non-tribal boys. Bengali boys, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when uh, somebody said to the father of one of the boys that he should file an FIR, he said, no, I can't do it because it will be very difficult for me to continue to live here if I do that. Mm -hmm. So there is this, you know, there is this fear, psychosis in uh, the tribal residents of Meghalaya, of Shillong in particular. It has been there since 1979. We have a history that some people of my community, the tribal community, do not wish to go back to. But you cannot leave history behind. You know, uh, one has to, one has to also always put the past as a perspective to the present and some, some way of going forward to the future. So I was very upset by this and uh, I put up a Facebook post asking the Chief Minister of Meghalaya, why is it that every time there, there is an assault on non-tribals, when there is lynching, when there is a burning alive of a non-tribal in this state, why is it that the perpetrators are never arrested? Never arrested, forget about conviction. I mean, how long can this go on? So I made an appeal that the rule of law should prevail and should be the same for everyone. I called upon the DGP also to show some action. And I also said that the traditional institution of that area, we call it the Dorbar Shnong, they should know who the troublemakers of the area are and they should identify them instead of protecting them. Right. That was what I said. And it was taken as an affront to that traditional institution. So they filed an FIR against me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then immediately uh, a lawyer friend said, no, we'll contest this because there is no ground for filing an FIR. So the contest was in the high court. And after several weeks, the high court says that uh, we let the, let the uh, investigation go on because we see that there is an attempt to create communal disharmony here. Okay. So that's the background of the case. So the Meghalaya Court has thrown out your case and now you are to have a special leave petition in the Supreme Court. Am I right? We will, we will be taking up the special leave petition. It so happens that my lawyer has just tested positive about three days ago. Okay. Yeah. It gets better. But meanwhile, my, the question to you, Kanchan Gupta, is uh, if you look at, you know, Patricia's case that the Meghalaya High Court has thrown it out, it's, it's, it was a very simple Facebook post where she's talking about the rights of non-tribals to live peacefully in a tribal-dominated dominated society like, like Meghalaya. What do you make of it? And other such examples that we will talk about, but first this one. As Patricia mentioned, uh, Meghalaya has a history of uh, uh, local versus non-local, uh, tribal versus non-tribal uh, uh, violence. And uh, this is not something new. Now, at, la at last, uh, somebody spoke up and pointed out that this cannot continue. And in this particular instance, uh, the, it, it, the, 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 
the violence was particularly horrific and uh, uh, it is only just that the administration and the government should uh, bring the perpetrators to book and uh, to that extent it is uh, it is a perfectly legitimate uh, post which patricia has made on facebook but uh, we why must do you hear... think why do you think kanchon that this is um, has so deeply affected the tribals the chief well, there is uh, the, uh, 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 the, what i understand and what my own uh, understanding of the uh, political situation or the politics of meghalaya and it is not only meghalaya that it would be true uh for uh, uh, several other states uh, th there is a outsider insider conflict and uh, uh, there is also along with it a certain amount of denialism so incumbent governments or uh, in uh, or the entrenched political parties or vested interests in these states the administration particularly goes into denial mode because they do not have the a uh, courage or the conviction to take on and uh, uh, re resolve this uh, problem of outsider versus insider no but the question is one of freedom of speech and expression and that's what so, we're discussing so, today because so all this, of us are journalists you are a former yeah but this failure this failure uh, and it's not a it's not a 72 hour failure or a 48 hour failure it's a historic failure Uh, and uh, the, uh, so uh, no, when you the question is uh, can we whether it's about insider outsider i mean patricia is an insider uh, for heaven's sake but the question is is patricia and other people in our country and i'm talking about freedom of speech and expression from on the part of journalists because that's what our profession is should we be able to speak and write what we think is right of course yes and uh, jyoti you have known me long enough i i believe in uh, when it comes to free speech i believe in absolute uh, uh, freedom to speak to express and to write what you wish to uh, uh, unfortunately in our country we have a rider attached to the freedom and that rider sort of uh, reduces the scope of free speech in india now that said uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the that social media remains uh, um, an uncharted territory of uh, the establishment in this country and when i say the establishment i mean the government the police the judiciary uh, largely is unable to fathom how to deal with the media uh, mm -hmm. with the, with social media uh but uh, at the same time we also have the supreme court which has not only once but i think thrice it has come down heavily on uh, state governments uh, um, trying to uh, suppress uh, voices on social media the most recently when when the west bengal government dispatched the calcutta police to uh, uh, pick up a, a, a young uh, person in the who lives in uh, the national capital region right. and uh, cart her back to calcutta uh, and they were armed with a calcutta high court order right. and the supreme court said that this is outrageous it's atrocious and you cannot do it and this was not the first time and we also know that the supreme court struck down the uh, terrifying 66a of the it act that's right so the, it it's evolving it's 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 now gathering speed and i am pretty sure that uh, patricia's uh, writ petition when it comes up before the supreme court uh, they are going to come down heavily on the meghalaya uh, high court and they are going to give her relief but that by itself is not sufficient yeah uh, we need to now collectively make the case that social media is a democratic space mm -hmm. unlike mainstream media where uh, it, there is a top down hierarchy there is a structured uh, 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 organization social media is not so and what social media is done is that it has democratized speech it has democratized uh, participation in dialogue and uh, discussion and debate right. and it has enabled it has enabled people like patricia 
to uh, ensure that their voices are heard. Right. So what is the positive side? The positive side is that uh, Patricia's uh, post has been taken, uh, uh, has been noticed by 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 the powers in Meghalaya, and they feel, and I I think I'm right when I say this. They believe that if this if this gathers steam, if this if this sort of moves up, mm -hmm. then uh, they will have to come out of their denialism, and they have to deal with the problem. Now that is the that is the uh, better side of it. The sure. the bleak side of it is that she is also being punished for doing what is in principle right, which is morally right, ethically right, and also which is something. Uh, uh, it is empowered by constitution and fundamental rights. Also, Patricia is just doing her job. So the question to you, Patricia, is, you know, you've heard Kan Kanjon at, at some length talking about the freedom of speech and how the freedom of speech is absolute. Now, would you say, Patricia, that in our country, one is your own case, but do you see that increasingly when journalists are trying to do their jobs, for example, Siddiq Kapan, the Secretary yes. of the Madras yes. last month, and he was picked up by the police. Uh, Kunal Kamra, the comedian who has been tweeting about the Supreme Court of India. What is your view about the freedom of speech? Is it absolute or does it come with riders? See, in the case of Siddiq Kapan, we don't even know what he said that he was uh, jailed. And yesterday he got just five minutes to speak to his lawyer, which is so severe. I can't understand uh, what sort of yardsticks we are using for whom. It seems to be, you know, devised for every individual. And uh, some people seem to attract more penalty than the others. This is yeah, of course. Look at the way Arnab got his uh, bail from the Supreme Court. It was so hurried. And look at Father Stan. Let's, let's not talk about journalists alone. Look at Father Stan Swami, 83 or 85 year old gentleman in jail for allegedly being part of that uh, chaos there in, uh, what's that place called? Uh, in, in Maharashtra yeah. and he's only asking for a straw because he's got Parkinson's and that the court says will take two weeks to be heard. Have, have we ever heard of so much cruelty in the past? But I think, <laughs> let's, I think Patricia, let's uh, limit our discussion today to freedom of speech and, dis and, and expression because we have, there are several other cases. If we talk yeah, about yeah. habeas corpus, then there are the cases in Kashmir or there are the, the Elgar, yes. Bandhra, yes. Bharadwaj and Varavara Rao and other people. But today, let's limit ourselves to a discussion of, on freedom of speech. So, so I, I, I want to go back to, no, yeah. let me go back to what Mr. Kanchan Gupta said, uh, that uh, social media has democratized free speech. That's true, but in a, in, a, in a region like the Northeast, where you have these interests and pressure groups, then you have militant groups, militant outfits as well. They also exercise a lot of restriction on your ability to speak what you need to speak up for. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, some of these pressure groups had, uh, at that time when I wrote that post, had carried out a campaign saying, arrest Patricia Mukhim, you know? So it's not just the state, it's also the extra state actors, the, the extra constitutional actors who engage themselves in this kind of oppression. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't know who to take on, really. Yeah, and then there are the trolls. You might, you might uh, think that, oh, it's okay, you know, you, you, you might like to think that you've got a, a duck's skin, let it flow off. But it does affect you because what they do is then they bring in your family members, your children, and they put them all together and say, look, this is what uh, this person is. If I may interrupt, Patricia, I, I would like to ask you about, say, for example, so two cases that come up um, you know, in front of us. One is the Supreme Court, Justice Chandra Chud, giving bail to Arnab Goswami precisely on the matter of free, free speech. Personal he, liberty. Personal yes, liberty. liberty. And he says yes. he, he was deeply concerned at this growing trend of states targeting those yes. who follow a different ideology than that of the government. What do you make of that? 
I think I, I really appreciate that judgment also because Justice Thunderchur said that we have to send a message to the high courts that they cannot just jail anyone for a social media post. You know, I think that is a very intuitive, that judgment. What, what do you think, Sajjan? Justice Chandrachur? No, when no, 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 no. Uh, Jyoti, Jyoti yes. Arnob did not get, Arnob was not given bail in a case involving free speech. That's true. It was in the abatement of suicide case. It, yes. is not, it is not an apt example. Okay. And uh, Arnob was uh, arrested uh, in, in the most malafide manner. Uh, his arrest and reinstitution of a closed case uh, uh, are bad in law. And because they were bad in law, the Supreme Court gave him interim uh, relief mm -hmm. to protect his personal liberty. Yeah. So let us says, not, I no, think no, he also no, says, no, It's important because you have been mentioning names over here. Yeah. No, no two cases, no two FIRs are the same. Mm -hmm. Some of the names you have mentioned over here, they have been arrested under a constitutionally approved law of the country. Which one? And their bail, their relief will be dependent on how the courts interpret that particular law. Which one are and you talking about? Cases, Which one are you referring to? No, I, I, I'm not going to name people. Now, you, you will be doing injustice to Patricia and to others who are being harassed for free speech by bringing in those extraneous uh, cases. So uh, let us... Are you, talking, are you talking about Siddiq Kappan who was... Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details. No, I'm because, asking you because Siddiq Kappan, the, the charge... No, I will not go into the details because, as I said, those are cases under a specific law and how the courts, uh, it, it is entirely for the courts to interpret that law and, and, and it is for the state to apply that law. Okay, now, so let, me, let me ask you about Kunal Kamra's uh, tweets, the comedian Kumal, Kunal Kamra. You know something, you know, I will, uh, and, and this is not only about Mr. Kamra. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that uh, because I believe in absolute free speech, I also believe that every citizen of this country is free to make a fool of himself or herself. Right. And, uh, uh, and then also be aware that there are consequences because there are in place laws which, which can then attract attention uh, uh, because what you have done is knowingly uh, violating those laws or those rules. No, no, he's now, not violating. No, no, Kunal Kamra no, no, if is I'm, not if violating I'm going to any walk, rules. See, I'm free. Okay, one second. Just no, no, I'm free. Jyoti, I'm free to okay. mock uh, the justices of the Supreme Court. Yes. I'm free to call them names. I'm free to uh, 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 sort of uh, attribute motives. Mm -hmm. I'm free to uh, uh, bring disrepute to them. Now, that is my right. And as I said, that every citizen has the right to make a fool of himself or herself. Okay. But having done that, the Supreme Court is within its rights to apply contempt of court rules if it feels that you have actually, you are a contemner and you have committed contempt of court. Now, if you, if you feel that that violates free speech, then you should move towards removing contempt of court rules. Okay. So the answer to that is not to justify what somebody is saying. So you, don't think, you don't Mr. Think what, Kamra. so you don't think no, what I will not justify today. Mr. Kamra because he is fully aware and he is doing it to grab attention. He is doing to uh, sort of, you know, make himself into a martyr victim, quote unquote. And that is not the case of Patricia. But is that I don't think case? Patricia, I don't think Patricia wrote what she wrote on Facebook because she wanted to draw attention to her. Or she wanted to sort of come out uh, as a victim of the state. No, I think we are describing motives. No, no, I think we are describing. Wrote what she wrote because she believes in it. She, 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 she felt strongly about it. Right. So no, I think we are you know, describing you, motives now because Patricia may have written something that she believed in. Kunal Kamra by saying that it's a supreme joke of India. He was referring to the Supreme Court of India. 
giving bail to Arnab Goswami. And in that respect, uh, he, um, you know, that's how he described the Supreme Court. So, you know, we don't know what his motives are. So right now we're ascribing motives to people. My question is to you, Patricia, is free speech absolutely free or does it come with riders? Is Kunal Kamra allowed to say what he wants to say? He, it, he is making fun of the Supreme Court, there's no question. But should the Supreme Court have such a thin skin or should it allow um, you know, comedians like him or other people like him to make fun of them? See, we are talking of the Supreme Court of India. In the UK, I think citizens have a lot of rights to make fun of the courts, the judges, the lawyers and whoever they choose to. But in this country, because we are circumscribed by that rider within reasonable restrictions, so we don't know when that can be applied. So we are actually inhibiting the free, full free speech freedom. We are not really fully free. And uh, let's come back to, for instance, uh, other cases. You know, you have these archaic laws like criminal defamation sedition. And all the journalists are being booked under these laws now. When somebody doesn't like it, when, when um, a corporate giant doesn't like what you write about the way they do business, then, you know, it's a criminal defamation. And you say something uh, out of your heart because you believe in that, then you, you're supposed to be seditious. How can we go on like this with these archaic colonial laws in a free and independent country? Mm -hmm. Because these also really restrict what we, what, we, what we really want to write in our newspapers, the stories that we bring out. Are you talking about Sadiq Kapan or do you have any other examples? No, I'm talking not just this gentleman, but in general, no. In general, there is that, um, there is that cloud that hangs over us, the sword of Damocles, uh, where you, you now have to choose your words very carefully. Otherwise, because we are, we are dealing with so many defamation cases, Joe. And I'm talking from that perspective. Mm -hmm. what, what sometimes, you sometimes yeah. even when you have documents to prove what you've written, you know, uh, you're accusing somebody of corruption, you have the documents, but people still decide to pull you to court just to teach you a lesson. Right. So, Kanchan, let me ask you um, about, the, I just want to go back to the Arnab Goswami case a bit, and you're absolutely right. Uh, Chandra Chud, Justice Chandra Chud gave him bail not on a freedom of speech matter, but on the abetment of suicide matter that we know, and that's, uh, uh, that's what he's been given bail on. But J Justice Chandra Chud also makes some very interesting remarks where he says that, you know, if you forget the way he yells, screams and yells, I do not watch, watch his news channel. But what concerns me is the values ascribed to human liberty. We are deeply concerned about it. Our democracy ex is extraordinarily resilient and governments may, must ignore all this. But this is not on the basis of which uh, elections are fought. And then he goes on to talk about further uh, human uh, freedom of liberty. Now, he is, in a sense, bringing you know, values of liberty and speech and freedom of speech into this case. So he is making the point that Arnab Goswami, whether you like what he says or not, is allowed to be, is allowed to say what he wants. Well, that is what I said, that everybody has the freedom to say what he wants or what she wants. And, uh, you know, uh, we often uh, forget that uh, free speech should not come with any legal rider, but free speech, anybody who believes in practices or stands for free speech also stands for responsible speech. And who is, know, going to decide that? Is, is the Supreme Court of India going to decide that? Who is going to decide that? No, Court? individuals have to decide that. Okay. You have to decide. Now, I cannot just because I have, I believe in free speech. I cannot suddenly, you know, begin calling you names. That's right. That would be a very irresponsible thing to do. Yeah. So it's stopped. So supposing somebody told me some story about you and I go start broadcasting it and then say it is my free speech. That is, that is irresponsible speech. Absolutely. And, so, see, freedom of speech comes with responsibility. Yes. Democracy also devolves 
yeah. a great degree of responsibility on citizens mm -hmm. only a responsible citizen can can sort of demand responsible behavior from the state but if we are irresponsible the state is bound to be irresponsible too but would you and say would you say um uh, kanjun and i just want to come back to the sadiq kapan case you know he was whether or not he was been picked up on whatever charges jyoti, I'm, I, jyoti I, i told you i will not talk about cases which have nothing to do with free speech he is a journalist he has no no you may be a journalist a journalist supposing a journalist is hauled up for uh, 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 you know uh, violating the official secret act supposing a journalist is uh, hauled up or or booked for murder for uh, uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, for uh, for uh, sexual assault i'm not going to say that that is uh, to do with free speech just because he is a journalist or she is a enough. journalist no that's a fair point that just you know if a journalist is hauled up for sexual harassment obviously none of us are going to be defending him you know, that's a that's a fair point but in the arnab goswami case as well there is an abetment of suicide no, case about no, no, no 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 you you did you didn't listen to what i said Mm -hmm. i know i have i have gone through the records of the case and i say this with full responsibility the reopening of the case of a closed case mm -hmm. and his arrest were bad in law now the expression bad in law is not my coinage it's a coinage by courts and that is why justice chandra chud once again brought in this whole idea of constitutional law and constitutional courts now constitutional courts are meant to strike down anything that is bad in law right and hence they have given him they have not struck down the case they have just given him interim relief hmm. and that interim relief is to protect his personal freedom as an individual Yeah. not as a journalist not as the owner editor of a uh, television channel mm -hmm. so we should you see often we weaken our own case often media weakens its own case by citing wrong examples now it is it is entirely how possible is how is this it is entirely possible that that the justices back of their mind they they see Uh, Arnab Goswami's arrest and harassment as an attempt to tame him. It is possible. I don't know. They have not spoken to me. Do you think? Do you think, the arrest, do you think? Do you think it was an example of somebody trying to tame him? I personally believe so. I personally believe so. When 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 a series of cases are filed in a in a sequential manner, and uh, 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 out of the blue, all this happens. obviously it is a case of trying to tame an institution or a journalist or an individual or an editor mm -hmm. you and i have been around long enough to see this happen to others okay patricia let me come to you a kanjun believes that uh, this reopening of the case against arnab goswami is an attempt to tame him do you think that this is one example of various governments trying to tame journalists who they like or don't like uh that is what uh, state governments will always do but i i have a difference of opinion about whether arnab goswami is practicing journalism or he is acting more like a voice of uh, the ruling party it, it it's so obvious that uh, it makes you it makes you angry that this is also happening in the name of journalism how can it be why should it be but that's a separate issue that's a separate issue whether you like no, it no why why can it be a, why should it be a separate issue jo we have to tackle this we have to you know otherwise we are, we are, we are weakening ourselves if we allow people who are mouthpieces of the ruling party to kind of uh, let everything pass off as journalism no but then you yourself <laughs> because we are meant to not be on the right or the left or anywhere we are not meant to have ideologies and i've said this in the past we are not meant to flirt with politics you can't do that you can't be 
objective an objective journalist if you're leaning right and you're leaning left no listen I mean, that may be very well and but i think the the fact is that a journalist is free to voice the ideology or of which whatever he chooses he or she whether it's on the li- right left center no but know, then then left, then where left. where's your then where's your no, credibility no, that where's is your credibility question. i think your viewers or your readers will decide what your credibility is i would i would say that but my question to you is do you think that state governments are in are using journalists you know in in the arnab goswami case kanchan gupta thinks that this was the attempt to tame him i assume that mr gupta is talking about the attempt on behalf of the maharashtra government which is in the uh, which is but this no i i understand this fully well and i know that state governments have used their powers to silence us you know by not giving you advertisement we've had this happen so many times right. and right. We, we are in a in a region that has no industries that has no corporates to fund you to 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 advertise so you're very dependent on government and unless we come up with a new revenue model uh, this will continue to happen right so gopal i think last questions to both of you and uh, this this news is uh, just you know less than 24 hours old in uttar pradesh in fatehpur two uh, the journalists two journalists from two tv channels of uh, sorry two journalists from a tv channel have been have had fir's against them because they reported uh, a case of of two sisters who have been killed now the the up police may think that that this reporting is is out of line but the fact is that there have been fir's have been instituted against these two tv journalists what do you make of that is that question to me yes it is to you yes no i i, I don't know i i i i mean i just heard this for the first time and uh, i i need to look into it and before i would like to comment yeah but uh, again i would say and and this i say it repeatedly that there is also responsibility devolving on media to behave in a responsible manner not to be irresponsible not to play ducks and drakes with facts and figures uh, unfortunately we we are living in a world where news is not about uh, is less about facts and figures and more about uh, what grabs eyeballs and uh, whether it is for the print medium or, mm-hmm. or for the online medium or for the television medium no, and, I, that, and that, that, i would say there that that again it's the prerogative of a journalist you know whether it's arnab goswami jyoti malhotra myself no no uh, it is if you let me complete now if i don't like what jyoti malhotra writes or has to say yeah. or what uh, 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 the print puts out Yes. i will just quietly ignore it i'm i'm not going to work myself into a lather just because jyoti malhotra has said this so that is the way i deal with it now and to expect the state to deal with it in that manner is i think far fetched a, a, a last point which i would like to make and this this is something which i have always believed in uh, that you cannot claim to be independent media media you cannot claim to be an independent journalist you cannot claim to represent a view or uh, or a story as as something which is independent of uh, all kinds of pressures if if you are taking even a paisa's worth of favors a favor from the government if you are taking government advertising if you are living in government quarters if you are operating out of government premises if you are using a government pass to travel if you are using government health facilities specially created for journalists and we know that all these facilities exist if you are doing all this i think it is it is uh, ethically wrong it is morally wrong for you to preach rectitude or for you to preach integrity or for you to preach uh, uh, the inviolability of the higher values of journalism so okay. we need to get off we need to get off from our high horses <laughs> we need to be like any other indian like any other citizen we need to we need to travel like they travel 
we need to deal with our problems the way they do and we need to make a living the way they do we, and we we cannot we cannot demand government support and yet say that i am not with the government i am an independent voice i speak for the people no it doesn't work like that right those are all fair points no i'm i'm sorry i have to come in here i think it is meant is directed at me i wish to inform that apart from government advertisements and i think that is not a favor that government does because it it disseminates all that to the public apart from that we do not get anything nothing no favors from the government we live in our own homes we travel like ordinary mortals we don't take any favors we don't even have insurance forget about housing and all that so to that extent um, please do not uh, generalize on this no it was not i'm sorry it was not meant for you uh, it is a general statement and and it is a statement based on facts i am not alien to how the media operates in the northeast i am not alien to how media operates where the state where i live in uttar pradesh i am not alien to how media operates in kerala or west bengal right, i think i think it's, 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 it's jyoti i think it's frightfully shameful that a state government announces puja bonus for journalists and no journalist i mean no no journalist body or no individual journalist even puts out a whimper of a protest and then uh, you know somebody who has put in almost 40 years like you have in media or in asso in association with media activities uh, uh, to be told about the higher values of journalism and not to generalize well i think patronage is uh, something that we we have lived with fought against for for many many years maybe not 40 years but patricia you have the last word which is that you quit the editors guild on this matter you wrote a very strong letter to the editors guild and you've been one of the guild's oldest members where you said that the guild did not support you uh, on 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 your case while it put out a very critical statement in support of arnab goswami mm -hmm. yeah see in both cases uh the the cases are sub judice they haven't been uh, you know finalized right uh, in in my case the high court has given that order that i can be prosecuted i mean i that that the investigation should go on uh it's a, like mr kanchan gupta said it is bad in law everyone who saw that order said it's bad in law there is no there are no law points there uh so i i communicated this to the editors guild of india and uh, it was last tuesday i i communicated this and expected them to at least respond if they can't take up the matter they should just say sorry we are we are looking into this to see if we can or cannot give a statement but there was complete silence and i i i'm saying this again i consider that to be a very scornful silence because i don't matter to this in the scheme of things that the, the guild is uh the guild is perhaps more concerned about members who are you know who are in in important positions running important newspapers news channels and of course i was uh, very intrigued by the fact that they jumped to support arnab goswami a non member that's fine i mean i i have no grouse about that but why should they leave their own member high and dry that's very insulting right on this Dr. Patricia Mukhim Kanchan Gupta thank you so much for participating in this discussion freedom of speech in the media is something that we are all we deal with on a daily basis and uh, like you said Kanchan patronage is very is very much a part of this something that we want to dissociate with ourselves from Patricia thank you so much for writing about these issues especially in the northeast it's something that we don't hear enough about but thank you both for participating in the print debates thank you thank you thank you